Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created this simple follow path animation. We did it. I did it in code, and I'll show you how I got to that and show you how this works. Um, it's not terribly complicated, but it did take me a little while to find. So I hope you enjoy, and let's get started. So before we get started, I'd like you to consider heading on over to uh, patreoncom slash print and considering consider donating a dollar a month to uh, to my channel. Um, that'll help me con continue to create content and, and uh, you know, you can participate in the conversation over there. I'm trying to create a little bit of a community around FreeCAD, KiCAD, and some other open source tools. And um, I'm going to start posting all my social content starting at Patreon. Uh, so the social is, stuff is a mess, so I'll try to organize it a little bit better. And But that's where the conversation is going to begin. And... I you know invite you to get in on that conversation over at patreon.com. Thanks and uh, let's get started with the video. One quick shout out I'd like to do before I get started is to the animation workbench. I think this is a great route to go and let me bring it up here real quick. And it's actually re have been recently re-iconized and probably worked on. Um, I've had difficulty working with the animation workbench, but um, I've had had results um, so, you know, give that a shot first because I think there's there's far more features and if it works out for you, you're more likely to get a, a more sophisticated result a lot faster. Um, also, however, I do like learning how to code, so that's the route I'm taking for this. So let's get started. So let's get started by creating the path we're gonna follow. I'm choosing to do this in draft, but you cer certainly could also do it in the Sketcher workbench all this macro requires is a valid edge. So let's go into draft and let's create a new document. I'm gonna show the, the grid and let's pan out a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a Bezier curve and I like, I think this is the one I want. There's one I like better than the other and I'm just gonna be snapping it to the nodes. Well, there's one I like better than the other for, for this sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's the Bezier because I can just I can kind of create a shape and I see it visually as I'm going. doesn't mean it's better, it's just better for me for this. <laughs> so now I'm going to create a couple of copies of this. So let's do that. So to create the copies, um, I think you could either just do, I'm just going to do C and V, Control C, Control V, and I should have a copy now. So yeah, I have two curves. And now I'm just going to rotate this, but to rotate it, uh, yeah, let, I'm going to, well, let's make two copies. So I'm going to do Control C and Control V. I should turn my key monitor on. Sorry, there we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my I'm going to move to the front, and I'm going to set the uh, the working plane to the front. And sometimes it just doesn't go for me. Let's see where is my working plane? Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Um, now if you just move the view and have this to auto, you'll be working from the front. But I choose to do it that way. And what I'm gonna do is I've selected one of the curves, doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna select rotate. I'm gonna select the center it's gonna rotate around and let's do this so you can just kind of see. So I'm picking it by the line endpoint and then I'm gonna take the piece that I'm, the point that I'm gonna rotate and we're just gonna go up and we can get to 90 degrees by selecting the grid. Um, so let's see, that's, and then we wanna rotate it. All right, let's do, let's do this one too. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I select the piece, I select rotate the center to rotate around, and then this basically the starting angle, and I'm gonna get that with the end select as again, the starting angle, and then the finishing finishing angle, which is gonna be right at uh, 270, but basically a 90. All right, and then the next is gonna be an offset. So I'm just gonna copy this one more time, Control C, Control V, and for this, I'm just gonna move it. So I'm gonna grab it. All right, I mean, I had it already selected, then I select move, then I select the end of that wire, and the end of this one. So now all the ends are touching. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, is rotate these 180 degrees. So I think I might be able, now let's, so let's put the, uh, the plane back on the top. So we'll do top. And now I can just grab that, grab rotate the, this, uh, the center and I'm just gonna grab the starting angle by selecting the grid and swap it around there. Do the same thing here, so we'll select it, select rotate, 
center point, starting angle, and ending angle. And I think that should be it. Yeah, so that's our shape. Now let's add a sphere and work on the macro. So I've moved into the part design workbench, or part workbench, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna add a sphere, and that's that will be uh, suitable for our project here, just a simple sphere. And now let's move into a uh, split screen. So what I'm gonna do is I have the report view down here, but I'm gonna go into uh, panels and add the Python console. And I've got it in a little bit larger font so you can see. And what I'm gonna do next is show you how to use the selection tool to get details of each of these objects. So let's do that. So to use a selection tool with the object selected, uh, and you can see it's highlighted here, I go to my Selection View tab. If you don't have that tab, what you can do is you can go into View, Panels, and do Selection View. So with that selected, I can right-click on it and send that to the Python console. So you see I've got all the instance objects in Python of uh, instant of uh, what I have selected. So my selection can consists of a uh, sort of a holder, uh, the shape itself, and then the elements of the shape. So the first thing I'm gonna look for is the length of the shape. So I'm gonna do shape and simply length, and you can hit enter and enter again. And so this gets the length along the edge and that'll work for any uh, single edge, I think. I don't know if you can do that for two of this. Well, at any rate, yeah, so for that object. And then we wanna get, be able to get the, um, something called a parameter. And so we wanna get parameter at a specific length. So let's do that. So the parameter is a u comma v value or uv value at uh, at a sp you know at any one point on your object, and it's um, I, I'm not super familiar with that, but what it what I understand it to be is a, a 2D uh, value of a flattened 3D object uh, or something like that. So if you know that, feel free, if you know better, please put it in the comments. Um, but I can get that by doing the element and do get parameter. By, by length, and then I can put uh, arbitrary length in, let's just do 99, and it'll return, return the UV parameter. Uh, and the reason I need the UV parameter is I can use the UV to get a vector at any point on one of these edges, so we'll do that next. So the last thing we need is the uh, vector at that parameter we retrieve. So let's, let's re-retrieve re that, because I cleared my console there. And I'm just gonna copy in something from my code over there. And I'm gonna set the UV parameter. Oops, and we'll set that equal to 99 here. And uh, I think we could just do print UV to check it. Yep. And so what I want is I want the value at. So we're gonna do element and then value, value at, and UV. And let's stick this into, uh, Let's just call it pause for position. And let's print that pause to make sure it got populated correctly. Yep. So we now have a vector that represents the UV position right about there, I think. So let's move that sphere to that position. So I'm gonna select the sphere. So now you can see I have um, the sphere in my selection console. I'm gonna send that to Python. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do it very simply. We're gonna just do object placement and for the sake of this, I'm gonna set the base of that placement uh, equal to POS. And that should move it. Oh, so, I was, so basically my, uh, my line starts here and moves this way, something we're gonna to have to address before we get this whole thing going. So that's the information you need to animate this. And then basically we're just gonna stick this into a, a for loop or a couple of for loops to animate through all four pieces of this line segments. So let's get started on that. So. I've moved us to getting started with our macro, so I created a macro using the macro icon, and I named it video animation. I moved my Python console down here, and I'm gonna copy these items out of here. Uh, so let's just try copy command, because I think that'll get rid of the, the little arrows, yep. Oops, it didn't copy, only copy those two. Let's try this one. Copy command. So I need all three. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. And then I wanna change the get document to active document. Um, uh, that works a little bit better and it's a little bit more agnostic to, uh, to what you, whatever you're working on. And I'm gonna copy that down to these three, to these two, sorry. 
There we go. And then the next thing is uh, I want to get the length. So we'll get the length from shape. We'll call that uh, edge length or elen. And it's just shape.length. And then we'll start our for loop. So to add the other three, I'm just going to copy in an array I did here. I, I, I'm not sure this is an array in, in Python. I apologize to all you Pythoners out there. And then I'm also going to define change this to a function. And we're going to call and we're going to define it as follow path. And it's going to receive a uh, a shape name. and a path name and we'll put a semicolon in there so let's change the sphere to shape name and i gotta get rid of the quote so it's an actual variable and not a string and path name is going to be the same and get rid of, let's see okay so that's that should be all we need to do to our function and then we just need a for loop to call it so let's do path in paths so from our array up above a semicolon and we do f call it with follow path and it's going to be um, we know it's, it's going to be a sphere every time through for us but then each iteration is going to be path and I think that should do it for the uh, macro Nope, what did I do wrong here? Unexpected indent. Oh, because I have to, nope, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> so I interrupted my uh, function there. Let's try it now. There we go. So now it's going to go through each pass, but it's going to do something wrong. It's going to the starting point of each one. So we could either uh, change the loop. Well, that one was okay. And let's see. Uh, so these these three are oriented right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. Let's try that one more time. So I'm just going to flip this guy around so it starts. So this starting point is over here. Yeah, because then it'll be fine. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let me go to draft mode. Now, one thing you notice is these macros are blocking. You can't do anything else while that macro is running. So once that's finished, there. So now let me go into draft mode. And so I'm going to do... Uh, let me get my grid back and let me go sorry about my phone there so we're gonna go to the front view and I'm just gonna rotate this guy I'm gonna rotate it we're gonna rotate it around a center so there's a center I wonder if I can pick the center in this even nope oh I'm I'm snapped nope I'm not snapped to the plane let's see where I can rotate that around oh uh, actually we'll, I'll just rotate it and then move it um, so this will pick that as our starting point. This is our rotation angle. We'll rotate it 180 degrees using the grid. Then I'll grab it. I use the endpoint snap, endpoint snap, and we should be good to go. So now let's run it again. And it should continue here and go all the way around. Great. Well, that's how you do it. I hope you like this, and I hope you're successful in getting uh, path animation going. I'd like to do this with a bike chain, where the chain follows the path, and maybe even like somehow you add uh, deflection on the edge so it shows gravity pulling down on the path. Well, anyway, if you um, if you like my channel, make sure you subscribe, click the alarm bell if you want to get notified, and uh, don't forget again, check me out on Patreon. I could use a little help there. So have a great day.